So I hopped out the bed and I got on my knees Asking the Lord forgiveness for all of the sins I know they might rat on me Like fuck around and treat them like a bitch and put that bat on Real soul survive all right, welcome back to Hot Topics TV, y'all. Y'all already know if the topic is hot, we're on it. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and let's get into the story right quick. So somebody is asking, a real OG says, are rappers really that much a threat to non-rappers, gang members, or is the emergence of rapper killings more likely a trophy hunt? Hmm. If these guys are so busy recording and performing, how do they find time to make enemies in the hood? I could understand if it was a robbery, you know, like somebody trying to take their jewelry or their money or their fancy cars. But most of the times it's just shoot to kill. What's going on? Man, listen, another one bites the dust. And a lot of people are making fun of him, saying that he lived up to his name because his name is True Bleeder. You know, True Bleeder, how ironic. He bled to death from multiple gunshot wounds, but we're going to get into that story. But I've been covering this for the longest, right? And I've been saying this. They're trying to put this on rap and hip-hop. Like Jim Jones said, being a rapper is the most dangerous profession ever. Even more dangerous than a U.S. Army infantry soldier going off to combat, which I found pretty offensive because I'm a U.S. Army infantry soldier that went off to combat. And I don't think being a rapper is more dangerous. What I think is going on is that they are giving the spotlight to young, impoverished black men from certain neighborhoods of volatile communities who already have gang ties out in the streets who already live a certain kind of life they get high they get drunk they get violent they carry guns they shoot at each other and then they want to be rappers and that lifestyle that they live follows them into rap so now rap and hip-hop is getting a black eye for their ulterior lifestyles it's not that being a rapper is the most dangerous job but it seems like a lot of people ain't listening. They're more willing to accept that, yeah, it's dangerous to be a rapper out here. Anyways, man, Hip Hop DX, shout out for this one. A shooting outside the mall of Louisiana has left Baton Rouge rising star rapper True Bleeder dead. True Bleeder. He was 18 years old. Him and a homie, 19-year-old Clifton Lindsay, were driving along in a car at a busy intersection when they got rolled on the death of true bleeder and Lindsay were shocking not because of shootings because where they come from this happens all the time but it was due to the fact that the shooting occurred in broad daylight at one of the busiest intersections in the area and this area is not usually prone to gun violence so that should tell law enforcement that it's spreading across your city. They said this is the area that is not prone to gun violence. It is one of the busiest intersections. Cameras everywhere, security everywhere, law enforcement everywhere, and their shooting went down. I mean, they riddled this car with bullets. I'm not talking about no one shot, two shots. This car got looking like a strainer. The shooting wasn't considered random either. It was actually considered a targeted attack from rival groups. Police Chief Murphy Paul previously said that the bulk of the violence in Baton Rouge, Louisiana was concentrated only in certain areas. We already know what those areas might be. I heard a comedian make a joke one time and he said, wherever you see a Martin Luther King Boulevard, swap meet, flea market, Stay far from those areas if you're not if you're not the type to get into the mix because it goes down. And how ironic! Look at look at what Martin Luther King stood for, and look at the areas in which carries his name. What goes on in those areas in every city across the United States of America? So true bleeder came about out of Baton Rouge, and he was noticed on Spotify and YouTube. Where he started racking up some numbers for his music. Not really big numbers. But he was doing numbers. He had a following. 
of about 2,800 listeners on Spotify monthly and uh, four to five highest streams that he put out was clocking about 15,000 plays at a minimum. So he was gaining some momentum, right? His final video is called Soul Survivor. And he released Soul Survivor on February 22nd. And then he got killed three days after. Wow. Another bright star, you would say. Or another menace to society that life caught up with him. In 2021, here's a little info for you. In 2021, Baton Rouge recorded 149 homicides with more than two dozen murders occurring by drive-by shooting. So more than 24 of those were drive-by shootings or people riding or people sitting in their cars. Now, in a statement regarding to the shooting, Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom said this. Today, we have seen yet another troubling episode of gun violence shake the core of our community with a shooting along Blue Bonnet Boulevard this afternoon. This violence affects the lives of everyone within our parish. Now, while we work to bring justice to the victims, we must understand that we cannot be controlled by fear. We must work together to identify those committing these criminal activities and instill accountability to create a safer community for everyone Baton Rouge residents deserve to live in a community of peace. I am confident as we band together, we as a community can overcome these challenges for a better future. Listen, I'll say it like this. A lot of these brothers, man, they're heading straight to prison or they're heading to an early grave. And if you talk to a lot of them, they actually really don't care. They will tell you to your face that they don't care. You know, one time gone, we would say, maybe somebody needs to reach out to him. And if somebody reach out to him, he could change. But I've seen it. Most of them don't care. Most of them have made up their minds, especially the ones who start making some money. They found a way to make money without going through the traditional route, which is like going to school, getting a good job, saving some money, maybe taking out a loan, maybe raising some money and then opening a legitimate business and struggling every day to run their legitimate business and to grow it into something that route. But for the ones who start making money, say online, the world has changed. These young boys are getting rich off the computer. In many different ways, right? And they're able to go in a recording booth, sing about murders, sing about whatever is going on around them. And I don't fault them for that. That's what rap is. It's storytelling. But we changed the game when we started requiring rappers who rap about gun violence to actually be a part of the gun violence. So no longer did we have our slick rick and these types of rappers who told stories about our environment who chronicled our environment like historians in books. We now required our men to actually be in the shits. So if you rapping about it, you better be living it. And if you're not living it, don't rap about it. Because when you come to our city to do shows, we about to test your gangster. That right there was the biggest downfall in rap music for us. And that is when rappers started faking it to make it and realizing that a lot of them aren't cut out for this life. You know, you get more guns, you get more money, you get more guns. But like Cardi B said, a lot of them are on drugs already. They've been sipping lean. They've been ODing on marijuana and whatever else they mix with it. So when they get a little bit of money, that advance check from a record company or something, they go overboard. They OD on the lean. They OD on the weed. Now they smoking exotics. And now they smoking all day because they can afford to. And now they got a bunch of guys with them with more guns, more drugs, and more drama. And it's just a sad case that spirals out of control all the damn time. Doesn't seem like it's going to get better anytime soon, though. I mean, 
what more can we say, right? But R.I.P. to True Bleeder, and may he rest in peace. But I know this ain't over. Somebody is going to go get somebody for this, and then they're going to go come back and get somebody, and the cycle continues. And there will be others in other cities who will fall victim for whatever reason, and the cycle continues. If you think you have a, what should I say, a suggestion to what the outcome or what the prognosis or what the, how do we fix this rather, the solution Leave your comments in the comment section below and I'll catch you on the next video. Hit that subscribe button. It's Hot Topics TV. You already know if the topic is hot, we're on it. I'm out. Peace.